Hey everybody, it's Joe the 3D Printing Professor here, and I have recently solved a problem. A problem that I have had with Blender for a very long time, and it's enabling me to do something that is just absolutely amazing, super cool, and I want to share it with you. So the problem is this. Here is a character that I'm creating for the Cthulhu and Friends Kickstarter that just wrapped up. And this character is a snake. Now, nothing unusual about that. However, this snake is defined by a curve object, which means that this curve, if I go into edit mode, has vertexes and lines between them, and that if I take those lines, and maybe I'll right mouse click and subdivide one so that I can grab the middle here and move it around, it enables me to change this curve and, and move it around and move it up and move it down and do cool things with it. However, there are other things that you can do with curves. For instance, did you notice that as I was reshaping it, that the chest and the tail were going along with it and the parts before it weren't really getting any love, but the, the parts after it, you might notice that the tail, the kind of ridging across the belly, is also growing and shrinking with it as well as the spikes along the back this sort of procedural growth is actually not that difficult to do with blender but here's the thing i needed these belly ridges to shrink wrap onto the curve and you can't do that in blender so how am i making it happen well i found a trick that enables me to turn curve objects into mesh objects that I can work with. And I'm going to show you how to do it now. This is the follow along section. So if you want to, you can open up Blender and do this with me as we go. So the first thing that we're going to do is in a blank scene, let's shift a, a Bezier curve. I'm going to go into edit mode and scale this curve up in edit mode. That way we have more curve to work with, but notice there's no geometry on this curve. So let's fix that. Go into the curve data in the data tab, scroll down to geometry and open it up, scroll down to bevel and give it a bevel depth of two, keeping in mind that a bevel depth of two means it will have an actual width of four because we're dealing with radiuses. Now we want to fill those caps because we want to have a curve that is manifold. We want to have a shape that is manifold. And a couple other things I'm going to do real fast. First of all, right mouse click on the curve and shade it flat because in 3D printing we are concerned with real geometry, not what we see on the screen. And I want this curve to kind of be low resolution so that I can add a subdivision surface modifier to it later. So I'm going to take the resolution and decrease it down to two. That gives me eight facets and I'm pretty happy with that. Also, it's dividing it up a little bit too much. So I'm going to scroll up to the top and the resolution preview. I'm going to reduce that down to four. Ah, that's too little. Let's take it up to six. Okay, six is good. Now I can select on the curve, go into edit mode, select one end and in the sidebar here, I can change the radius of one side to 0.2. That'll give us a nice little taper like a snake's tail. I can scale this down just a little bit and maybe scale this down so it doesn't curve as much. And now I can extrude out some more and I can add some more snake to it. Now I'm going to delete this vertice for now. We'll add more later, but there's something else that I want to do because remember my snake had a nice little belly on him. So I'm going to exit edit mode. And actually, before I do too much more, I'm going to add a modifier onto my curve. You can add modifiers to curves. And the modifier I want to add is that subdivision surface right now. So if I increase that to two, we'll see that we get some additional smoothness. Now it's not rounding out the ends like I would expect it to. And there's a reason for that, but I'm going to leave this modifier on here for now because that'll be important later. But for now, let's just take this curve, move him out of the way so that I can add a mesh plane into my scene. Take this plane, go into edit mode, scale it in the X just a little bit and scale it up in the Y just a little bit. I don't want it to go all the way to being four around because it's going to wrap around just the bottom of this snake. And if it has to go from end to end, it could cause a problem. So keep it about three millimeters. And then we're going to, on this plane object, add a array modifier. 
change the factor X to 1.2 so that there's a little bit of a space between them. And instead of doing this one according to a fixed count, we're going to fit it to a curve. And of course the curve is going to be our snake's body's curve. So now notice that if I go back to the original curve, go into edit mode and do that extruding out, that if I make this longer, the array gets longer or shorter with the length of the curve. So that's pretty cool. Exit edit mode, select on our array object. And we're gonna add a couple other modifiers to this. The next modifier that we're going to add is to deform it along a curve. And of course the curve is going to be our curve. Now notice that it goes pretty wonky at this point. That's because we moved our curve. If we hit select the curve and hit Alt G to clear the movement and put it back in the center, well, <laughs> our snake's belly is following our snake perfectly right down the middle of it. Easy fix, no problem. Just go into edit mode, select everything and hit GZ to go down. Now, if you want to see this being affected by the curve in real time, well, select real time preview on your curve. It's a little bit odd because the mesh that we're editing is over here, but the edits are happening against the curve. But that's okay, that'll give us an idea of where it is. We want it to just be up close to there. And notice how the curve is getting smaller as it gets to the end with the radius of that curve. That's pretty cool. Now, you'll notice that the way I set my preview up, I know which way the normals are pointing and the normals are all pointing down. Now that doesn't actually matter in this case, but it still bugs me. So I'm going to rotate my mesh by X 180 degrees to flip it over so that the normals are pointing down the way that I think that they should, but that's not important. That's just me being a little crazy. Okay, let's exit edit mode and we're gonna add a few more modifiers to our belly. The next modifier we're going to add is just a subdivision surface to give it more geometry to work with, but we only want it to subdivision surface once because we basically want it to turn a cube into an eight sided object. That way it's got more points to try to find the belly with. And we're going to do that with a deform shrink wrap modifier. And we're going to shrink wrap it to the snake's body, but we can't. We can't do that because the snake's body is a curve and mesh objects cannot be shrunk wrapped to a curve. This is where we'd be stuck in the past. And the only solution that we would have would be to take the curve object and we'd probably want to duplicate it so that we could keep an original curve that we could edit if we ever needed to, then take that duplicate, turn it into a mesh and then work with that duplicated mesh object which becomes a huge problem because if we ever decide to go back and edit the original curve, now our mesh doesn't follow it. We have to delete the mesh object, reduplicate the curve object, return it into a mesh and rehook up all the modifiers that were aligning to the mesh. Oh, what a headache. Well, I found a much better way and all it takes is just a little bit of geometry nodes and a proxy object to work with. So let's do that now. So to start with, we're going to need to create a object that doesn't have any geometry of its own. We could potentially do this with an object with geometry and just Boolean them together. But for this project, we want an empty object that will be 100% representative of the curves geometry when it's done. So all you have to do is hit shift a mesh and single vert object origin only. And if you don't have this, then activate the plugin for mesh extra objects. Alternatively, you could just add a cube or a plane, go into edit mode and delete all of its geometry in there. Either one will work, but I'm going to add an object origin only. It calls this vert and it brings you into edit mode. So hit tab to exit that. But now we have an object with no geometry of its own and we're going to add a modifier to it. And our modifier is a geometry nodes modifier. So I'm going to pull up the animation bar and change it into a geometry nodes editor for now. There we go. Create a new geometry nodes function. Scroll it up so that we can see what's going on. And you can see that the default geometry nodes function takes the input geometry and pipes it straight to the output geometry. What we want to do is we want to do some messing around in the middle. 
So the first thing we're going to do is in the geometry nodes, shift A, a mesh operations, mesh Boolean object, and just kind of drop that in right here. And notice that it still has the geometry going into mesh and then the mesh going out. Now we can have as many mesh objects as we want going into this, but now we need the geometry from our curve in here. So for that, we go to add input and it's object input. So scene object input. Drop that in and let's move things around so we got a little bit of space to work with it. Now we need the object to be our curve. So just select our curve object here. Now we just take the geometry of our curve and we pipe that into the mesh and it should come out the output. So if I bring this into local mode, uh, that doesn't quite work. If I disconnect the geometry, okay, that worked. What if I take both of these, just put them into mesh too. There we go. Everything into mesh too. So our mesh Boolean will just, oh, there's the problem. We're doing a difference. Let's switch that to union. There we go. Everything gets plugged into the same one with a union. So we are unioning our empty object with a curves mesh. But notice something about this curve that we're looking at. If you check out this curve, it's not smooth. It's, it's the original curve curve object so if we exit out of our local view here there we go and we select on our curve here our curve is a lot smoother because it's got the subdivision surface but the geometry of our vert here isn't getting the modified version it's getting the original so you know what i'm going to do i'm going to select the bezier curve and i'm going to get rid of the subdivision surface modifier it doesn't do anything also while i've got the curve selected I'm going to go into its object info under the viewport display. I'm going to display it as wire. That way we don't, you know, it's easier to just kind of have it be a object in the scene that we can see, but that doesn't actually affect anything. And it's easier to select our proxy object. So now we got our proxy object and we've got a geometry nodes here that is grabbing the data from the Bezier curve and turning it into a mesh. And now, well, let's do a couple of things. Let's see, first of all, we can add a modifier on top of this. We can add our subdivision surface on it. And notice now that it's actually, uh, it's actually smoothing the front and back the way that we expect it to. I don't know, it works now. Okay, so we can increase that and make it smoother. We can select our belly object here. We can shrink wrap it to the proxy object here. That works pretty good. Let's add a couple of more modifiers while we're here. Let's add a generate solidify. Let's solidify it by a thickness of one, offset of zero. Maybe in this one, because it's so small, I maybe we'll do a thickness of 0.5. And then let's add one more subdivision surface onto this. And let's increase it by two. And now we've got a nice little cartoony belly that follows our snake. And if we select on the original curve, which remember that one, we're looking at it as a as a mesh, but I can still go into edit mode and I can, and let's do this from below so we can see, extrude out more, rotate it, change it, move it. We have control now. We can do whatever we want with this curve object and we don't lose the mesh object. We don't have to delete the mesh object and go back. We now have total control and can work with it in the space. And that is really that's that's something that we've never been able to do before and i'm super excited now there are a couple of things that we can do to our geometry nodes function here to make it more uh, generally usable what we can do basically is in, under the interface add an input make this input of type object let's name this input object and take the object and pipe it into our object info object area. And that way in the geometry nodes modifier here on the side, we can then assign our object from there. Now we could just close down this object info. We don't need it for anything else. So we'll just leave it there. But there are a couple other inputs that we probably could use. Let's do an input. This is going to be a Boolean input because in this case it's either yes or no, on or off, one or zero. 
and that's a different meaning for boolean than what we're used to we're going to name this socket we're going to name it self intersection because if we ever enter, run into weird geometry that we need to turn on self intersection well now we can do that from the geometry nodes modifier and just like that we're going to add another input make it a boolean rename this one to hole tolerant pipe the hole tolerant to the hole tolerant function and uh, that's it we now have a absolutely functional usable function that we could use not just for this one example of a snake body that we were making but for uh, other use cases that we might run into for instance i was working on a carrying case for all of the minis this this little mountain here will fold open and you can put the minis inside of it and then close it up and store them if you wanted. And I wanted to honor some of the top backers on the Kickstarter by putting their names on little uh, markers throughout it, but I wanted to encode them. So the way that I encoded them was to put their name in a Braille font. A Braille, it's, it's an encoding and it's not a common one. So I thought that'd be pretty cool. However, Text objects are like curve objects in that they're not meshes. And in the past, a traditional way would be to take the text object, finish editing it, and then convert it to a mesh, at which point it stops being editable as a text object, which meant that I couldn't play with the idea and try different fonts and see which one would work. However, I found that this curve union also works with text objects. So I was able to use these text objects as mesh booleans into my objects. Now, the one thing to keep in mind is that you can't keep the text object in the same uh, collection as your mesh objects. If you want to do a collection level boolean with those objects, you need to take those curve objects and those text objects and put them in their own collection only mesh objects in the collection that you want to boolean together but then when i do that i can have a boolean where i do the whole collection of all of these objects and as long as i have my proxy mesh objects in there they'll boolean in just fine and it works great so this works for both curves text anything that you want to keep editable can now be boolean together though that does beg the question if it is this easy to do a boolean with a curve object that there's just this little node that says mesh boolean that we can just boolean things together with then why doesn't the boolean function allow us to use the geometry from curve and text objects uh, just as it would with any other mesh object i mean we're able to do it with geometry nodes just like that the boolean modifier should also work like that ah well until and if the blender developers decide to add this function to the base boolean object we do have a good workaround here in being able to modify these through geometry nodes geometry nodes is kind of like blenders developers handing us the tools to make the functions work the way that we want them to and in a reusable way you can take these geometry nodes and import them into future projects and you don't have to rewrite them every time it's wonderful of course if blenders developers ever do make the boolean mesh work with curves and text this video is going to be completely and immediately out of date. So thank you very much for watching. And I want to remind you that you are a child of God. So you're special to me. So take care of yourself. And if you can, someone else too. And keep making awesome stuff with Blender. Thanks for watching.